This film contains adult language. There are 17 swear words carefully placed throughout. Kids, can you find them? Don't fucking scream at me. Where's you the dumb money? Fuck you. Look at you. With your fucking 48% body fat and... Hey, welcome to episode number 425 of the uh, UFO Buster Radio News Report. And this is uh, Monday. We all hate Monday with the passion. If you, I'm going to be honest, if you are a, uh, a hard-working blue-collar employee, you fucking hate the fuck out of Monday. Uh, and that's the truth of it. Just, just be honest about it. It's true. It really is. Monday sucks like hell. And I say it all the time. You hit the weekend trying to get refreshed, but for the love of God, when you come back on Monday, the shit hits the fan, sometimes even worse than what you left it, and you wonder why. Why didn't I why didn't I just join the circus? I mean I, I could have done just fine as a like a like a grizzly bear trainer or, or the or the clown that walks behind the elephants when they shit. That might have been my calling, but I I missed it. I did. Hell, Ringling Brothers uh, was big back in the day. They're not even around anymore. That's that's how fucked up that is. Your opportunity to run away from your current job is gone. <laughs> Completely gone. All you could do is uh, slam down some drugs and live under a bridge. That probably is the best way to go these days, especially with COVID-19. I don't know. This is the kind of day it is. Got you for Buster Radio, by the way. I am, Manny. And uh, we are going to talk about UFOs today. Just let me get my shit out the way first. For real. I got to get this off my chest. I'm just saying. Here's the other thing. I don't understand why folks, like, they'll listen to, like, one episode and be like, uh, Hey, man, like, I really like what you're talking about, the news and all, but I can't get over the cursing. Are you fucking serious? What the fuck is wrong with you? Shithead. Really? You, when you were a snot-nosed kid, you heard worse words than what I'm telling you. I guarantee you. I'm from New York, folks. That's uh, that's just the bottom line. And, and sometimes I, uh, I like to let it go. And to be honest, the podcast has been a release for me because I can curse like crazy. You know? Now, do I do that uh, no more everyday life? Like, a, do I go into a restaurant and be like, hey, fucker. No, I don't. I'm not. I might think it though. I'm gonna be honest with you, but I won't do it um, unless I've moved to my like second margarita, and then you know all bets are off. So it can all go to hell in the hands back, back in the basket. If, as far as I care, I mean, I just won't leave a tip. Um, yeah, those are some of the things that we, I was thinking about today. Like why people, why people are that way. Listen, you live. You live a very short life, and if you're gonna get pissed off by the fuck word, fuck, then you're fucked. I'm just, I'm gonna just put it out that way. That's it. If you're going to not get to know someone because you know they said penis, I don't know what to tell you. That's a very sad life. That's a very closed life. 
you should go tomorrow. Go out wherever you are. Like some of you are working from home, but you know, go out to the store or whatever and just drop a penis on somebody. Not like literally. I'm just saying, just say it. Just say it. You know, like you're at Walmart. You know that damn register when you go to slide your damn card or you stick it into the damn thing, fucking thing doesn't work. You know, every other time there's an issue. I drop a penis on it. It's a penis machine. See what happens to uh, the person behind the counter. I guarantee you, they will laugh. They will laugh about it. I don't think anyone would get offended by that, especially not in that situation. But just be free is what I'm saying. You got like fucking what five, six decades. Like some of you, some of you won't even make it another decade. I'll just be honest with you. But that's just the way life is. That's just why. So why be prim and proper? You're not in the UK. Hey, folks in the UK, how you doing? Um, you know, you're not. You don't have to be that way. Just be chill. Just be chill. We got four stories. One of them is really short, but there there is something that is said in this one story that um, is actually reflected in the story before that, and we're going to talk about that. At that point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the live chat and see what the Asgardians think about that. And by the way, what's up to the norm? Uh, Green man, Dre, we got to say Davina, she's in there somewhere. Uh, hiding out because she she's not allowed to log on herself on her own name. Um, let's see who else is on here. That's it. Uh, we haven't seen Pucky in a while, but Pucky's, of course, dealing with some stuff. So hopefully we'll see him back. And um, that's about it. We got some music selections. The first one is going to be a little sad because Mondays suck. And then we're going to pick up the pace. And the pace, that's where it's all at. And by the way, I just want to say this. Anyone that believes that H2O is not prevalent in the entire universe should eat shit. They should be eating some dirty ass crow. And they should really line that shit up around their home. Put it on back order if you need to, because you're going to be eating crow to your end of days. I promise you that. Let's check out this track. Just to get the uh, the sadness out of the way. By the way, I am predicting that the system will crash today uh, because it's acting all kind of crazy. Like right there, I can't even play the damn song. What in the... Somebody ought to come along and let you down so you could see my side and how it feels to hit the ground How can you say that nothing's different, that we should pick up the pieces Somebody ought to come along and let you down If you still wanted to be loved, you should have never let me go Hope somebody will break your heart and leave you crying on the floor You let me down, I won't do this all again Even if I try, I can't forget it If you still wanted to be loved You should have never let me go Somebody said it should be easy to forgive We all make mistakes and no one lives without sin Why'd you have to break my heart? I wasn't ready to let you go yet And now you're standing at my door Thinking that I'm gonna let you in But if you wanted to be loved You should've never let me go Hope somebody will break your heart So you could feel this pain and know What it's like to be left out in the cold Standing by yourself, no one to hold If you still wanted to be loved You should have never let me go
But if you wanted to be loved, you should have never let me go. Hope somebody will break your heart so you could feel my pain and know what it's like to be left out in the cold, standing by yourself with no one to hold. If you still wanted to be loved, you should have never let me go. You should have never let me go. That song was so fucking sad. Uh, by the way, I've been uh, still doing my my vlogging, moto vlogging, as they call it. You know, riding the old motorcycle. I've become such a I don't know rugged type of guy. You know, I'm out there riding my motorcycle. I've even changed the spark plugs and all that kind of shit. And I did this little bit of maintenance, and I got on the bike this weekend. And I said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna get on it." And I hit a little bit over seventy miles an hour on this thing. And the good thing is that the back road, you know. Back road, not too many uh, cars as far as traffic, whatever. But it is such a weird feeling to be going 70 miles an hour on a motorcycle. And um, all I could think of is if I crash, I'm so totally fucked. I mean, I'm not going to survive that shit. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thought to have while you're on there. It's it's just fucking nuts. Okay, so here is a uh, situation. We have a longtime pilot who photographs a mysterious orange orb in the daytime over North Carolina, over the mountains. Now we know, historically, the mountains of North, North Carolina, they've had some crazy shit going on out there. But here we have a pilot, 45-year pilot. This is this is not your Johnny come lately. This is a guy that has some history, and with that goes the idea that he he knows his fucking airplanes, right? He knows what's in the sky. He has an uh, he has a clue. He has an idea. His name is Charles Cobb. Uh, he'd never seen nothing like this: an orange tinged orb high over the Carolina mountains in the sky, in the freaking daylight. It was a June morning, and he was amazed by this. He says, here's <laughs> uh, here's the part that kind of bugs me. He says, the object was round and irregular. What the fuck is round and irregular? What, what are you talking about? If it's round, there's nothing irregular about it. It's perfect. It's a sphere. But it was irregular, he says. I don't know. Uh, he says that uh, this thing would plummet tens of thousands of feet before soaring right back up. What the fuck? Goddamn Tic Tac. Did he see a a pimped out Tic Tac in an orange color? I don't know. But this is what he explains. Cobb, by the way, uh, 88 years old. So, thanks, Bugs. 88 years old. So, there, there could be an issue there. You know what I'm saying? There could be an issue. 88... You're seeing shit in the sky, but I don't know. But anyway, he is a Korean War combat veteran. God bless his heart. Uh, he was, he spotted this object while he was sitting uh, at the uh, Silver Creek uh, Airport in uh, Morganton. And um, he goes there to visit for some reason. Uh, but he goes there to visit uh, the 1940 Piper Cub um, he keeps in the hangar. So it's like he's got an airplane. He's got his own airplane there. And he was going to visit, and he checked this out. Now, first of all, listen, Mr. Cobb, why didn't you just jump on your airplane and check that shit out? I think that's that's uh, the primary thing that keeps us from really figuring this out is that we as uh, regular folk, we can't get our happy asses on a plane and just go chase the shit. Wouldn't that be fantastic, right? Like, if I, like, call somebody up and say, Hey, Pepe, check it out. I've got this uh, UFO I'm looking at. Can we get on your um, F-14? Let's go chase this some bitch. That doesn't happen, and that's uh, that's an issue, right? Because if you're thousands of miles in the freaking sky, you're fucked. You're not going to see anything. Anyway, he says he, um, he was looking at this thing for a few minutes, and suddenly he's like, God, dying it. 
I would pull out my iPad and I would take some pictures. Yeah, he said the object had an opaque center. Okay, and it was a eleven eighteen a.m. June twelfth. Now eleven opaque center that could be cataracts. Uh, I you know I don't know. It, it could have been something wrong with his sight. Uh, and then here's the thing: if you're like taking a report from someone who's like almost fucking ninety years old, right, and they see shit. Well, you know, that's that's aging. You know, I know he's a pilot and all. He's been in, he's seen some shit in his time uh, being a uh, a veteran and all. But at 88 years old, you know, fuck, everything looks opaque. Even the person sitting in front of you, like four feet away from you, they're fucking opaque as hell. I'm just saying. Uh, he said this, it was hard to tell the size, he said, although he distinctly recalled the craft dropping at times, uh, to maybe 15,000 feet before shooting back up to at least 30,000. Did he read uh, Lieutenant Fravor's account of the Tic Tac? I don't, um, this is really weird. And then how can you tell, well again, 45 year pilot, who knows, he could probably tell how high the blimp is, you know, just by uh, just blinking his eye at it. He probably holds his finger up, kind of licks the tip, holds it up and says, yeah, 30,000 feet. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people try to discount what he had. Now, what he did do is he took the pictures to his fellow pilots, you know, the guys that have been up there, the veterans and stuff, and none of them kind of detracted from his statement. They were saying, yeah, we can't tell. What, what the hell is that? They really felt like he had something, things that they've never seen before on his iPad. Now, an iPad, probably not the best thing uh, to take a picture, but that's all he had in front of him, right? Because again, 88 years old, you don't use a regular smartphone. You need the big ass fucking screen in order to see shit. So you walk around with an iPad. That's your cell phone. You know, you don't even stick it in your pocket. You just, you get yourself a man purse. Can you walk around with it? Um, so, you know, there you go. Uh, he said also that the, uh, the craft was also flying, uh, parallel during the 15 to 20 minutes that he watched it. Uh, so it was not a comet because it wasn't coming down towards him. He said this thing was pointed north and it was just flying. So it wasn't something that uh, people can confuse with either a potentially uh, crashing satellite, you know, space junk. And it sure as hell wasn't a uh, comet. This was an unidentified flying aircraft. Now, the funny thing that came to my mind is we've been reading um, in the news. I, I, well, okay, I have. I don't know about you guys. But I've been reading a lot of stuff about everything that uh, so-called Space Force is doing. And last week they started some uh, actual training, I guess their first class at Space Force. But we've we've heard historically that there are all of these aircraft that are top secret we haven't heard about, we haven't even seen yet. And just two weeks ago, the news broke that there's a new advanced fighter jet for the Air Force that some company is building. And I think it was somebody tried to say it was Lockheed that's got some new fancy jet, fancier than the F-35 that's out there now. Lord knows what the fuck he's seeing. Lord knows what anyone sees anymore. There is, like... It's actually getting a bit more convoluted to figure out what the hell you're, you're seeing in the skies. There's just so much up there now. There is way too much in low orbit, in even in space, and in the skies for you to even think that this is alien. I don't even know how you do that. Like, it was simpler back in the day. You know, when your granddad and your grandpa were out and they were walking around with their fucking suspenders on, and they didn't have all this fancy stuff, and they saw shit. But they saw they saw real shit. They didn't see, uh, you know, drones. They didn't see shit falling from uh, China down on you. They didn't see any of that. They were actually seeing a UFO. Now, you could probably classify the shit in all kind of ways, and we even have a story that's going to talk about that because you just don't know anymore. There's so many things in the sky that uh, pinpointing a real UFO 
from 4.2 far is 4.2 far fucked. Okay, it's going to be really hard to do that these days. Okay, we got to up our game as sky watchers and get some real equipment in order to do this because, no, uh, your iPad is not going to cut it. There's more in the story that you can read about. The link is in the description. Uh, description, check it out. And then we're going to kind of bring up the music a little bit, a little bit more upbeat for all of you who um, are standing on the ledge right now. You know, the other day I was thinking about, I got to do something a little different this Christmas. About uh, three to four years ago, when I say probably four years ago, because Big O was still around quite a bit, I actually uh, designed some um, some thongs. And I had the uh, the uh, UFO Buster Radio logo right up front, you know, kind of like protecting the package from, uh, you know, probings or Providing probings, I guess. And uh, I was thinking, you know, that's a good thing for this year. Maybe I can get together like an Asgardian one and we'll put the logo on the uh, on the rear because it is Asgardia. Or maybe even drop one that says uh, 17 up front. There might be some disappointment for some of y'all, but still, why not? Bugs is snoring away back here. By the way, my computer is having crazy problems again. Uh, I can, it's a touchscreen, and I can't touch it. Like, what kind of ridiculous shit is that? By the way, that's Bugs. He's uh, taking care of business. Uh, mysterious lights in the night sky baffle Hawaii residents 
What in the world is this? We got to thank Hawaii for bringing us a mua mua. Uh, thank you. And thank you for the great name. Uh, mysterious lights across the night sky over the weekend baffled Hawaiian residents. Uh, social media was going nuts. First time I hear about this. Apparently, when you're on the island, social media does not leave the area. Uh, but people are saying UFOs. UFOs. Scientists are jumping in. Now, who the fuck asked them? I'm just saying. Bugs, can you get a room back there? What the hell? Scientists apparently are getting into the UFO thing, but not not to say, hey, yeah, that's a UFO, but the opposite, to say we know what it was. Uh, there is a name that I'm going to butcher. Um, please bear with me. Uh, Kuipo Kanawale Wali. <laughs> uh, try to say that twice because I could even say it fucking once. He captured a video. I think it's a he. Captured a video of the lights as they pass under the moon on Saturday night. Um, we call him the K Man. K Man said, I started videotaping and when they got closer. I started freaking out because I like, oh, what in the world is this? And that's a good question. What would you do? What would you do if you had these strange UFO lights come out of nowhere, no sound, probably uh, really bright, moving fast in your direction? What would you do? Would you hide? Would you pull out your iPad or your... uh you know, your 2001 cell phone, your flip phone? Would you sketch it? What would you do? Would you call someone? 911. Somebody help me. I'm about to get probed on the beach in Hawaii. Yeah, it's probably a probing every damn weekend for these guys. But still, what is it? What would you do? It's, it's a good question because it's a theme. We hear this theme a lot when folks come across UFOs that they can't explain uh, for whatever reason, whether they are knowledgeable of aircrafts in the sky uh, prior and now, or if they just have experience with technology and they see something that's out of sorts. Is it fight or flight? Would you react that way? Would you like stop like a deer in headlights? Or would you try to figure it out? Would you try to do something? Who knows? Uh, Sherry English also captured the video of the lights um, as they sailed overhead. So somebody else did it. It wasn't just him. Uh, he says we didn't... Uh, well, Sherry is a she. Uh, we didn't know what it was, where it came from. She told the uh, local news folks out there called Khan. Uh, <laughs> But a great name. Uh, it just appeared. It was actually a very eerie, eerie feeling. Again, hit the second person, freak the fuck out, who again probably was like a deer in headlights. What do I do? Well, Kauai, have no fear because science has an answer for you. This guy back here, he's got problems. Now he's fighting with his blanket. Uh, John O'Meara, the chief scientist at the W.M. Keck Observatory in Hawaii, says the lights were from China. We cannot get... Why the fuck is China just fucking everything up? This is the year of China. This this must have been the year of the big bald dragon. Yeah. So it was like dragon testes, like all, just all over the place. It's not even a bull in, in China shop. It's, it's like a dragon with big balls just going in and taking care of things all over the place. So John O'Meara says, no, don't worry about it. It was China again. Rocket booster that was uh, used to launch a Venezuelan communication satellite in 2008. That's a conspiracy right there. They don't got fucking uh, communications in Venezuela. Are you serious? They don't got none of that. Conspiracy, I just called it. Um, he says basically that uh, what's happening is this uh, rocket booster it does all these trips around the planet and it's getting a little closer. Close enough so that people can see it as a UFO. And I quote, The booster has been orbiting around the Earth, but its orbit has been decaying and eventually decayed enough 
to get slowed down by the atmosphere and re-entered in over the Pacific. According to Omer, he says space junk falls all the time. He should have just put at the end of that stupid, but he was nice about it. Usually it doesn't make such a great light show, but in this case, we were lucky. Huh? Really? Now, the weird thing is that I want to say that the picture I saw of this thing uh, didn't look like space junk. I'm just saying, Mr. O'Meara. I mean, it could have been. He's probably, you know, up there with Coke bottle glasses, checking out the space junk every day. Probably really blind by now from looking at all this stuff, so you got to take his word for it because he's sacrificing himself for science. So, a thought came to mind. I said to myself, hey, um, what do you think if we look up how much space junk is there really? So here's some numbers for you as far as space junk. 8,000 metric tons. That's a lot of junk. More than 23,000 orbital debris larger than 10 centimeters are known to exist circling the Earth. Fuck, we're lucky we can see anything. We are. <laughs> I can't believe we can even see the damn moon anymore. That might change thanks to SpaceX. Yeah, 23,000 pieces of junk out there. And those are only the ones that are over 10 centimeters. So um, I'm sure there's a whole lot more smaller than that. There's a lot of junk out there, to be honest. And it's probably a reason why we don't see very well. Why we have to put a damn telescope on top of a 747 in order to see shit in deep space. Or shoot telescopes up in there into uh, orbit. In order to see past all the damn junk. It's not surprising. Not surprising at all. There's more to this story as as well. So please, if you want to read more, get more info about what happened in Kauai to Kali Kali Wali, please click on the link and pay them a visit. What about the world we both believed in? What about the word that made it so? What about your blood boiling creases? When you're just aching for her love like you could blow.
the other thing that bothers me too is when people say um, the music detracts from the message. Are you fucking stupid? Really? It's UFO Buster Radio, so I like to play music. Come on, get with it. The best thing is, if you don't like the music, you have a function on your mobile app player that'll skip, you know, a minute or two ahead, and you can skip the music, even if it's something you don't like. Now, you probably were bobbing your head to that last song. You know what I'm saying? You probably enjoyed it, or you enjoyed some of the other tracks, but... You know, it's okay. You can skip. It's good. You know, the guys that are fucked are the guys that are here live. They <laughs> they have to listen to it, no matter how bad it is. Uh, but hell, that's just the way it goes. Kind of feel that way, you know, working this damn computer right now. Uh, thanks, Bugs. Like I said, it's touchscreen. The touchscreen is not working, so I went to click one thing, and the music started to play. It wasn't even supposed to play that song, but for you who love it, you're welcome. You're welcome. Bugs. 
Bugs is in uh, full snore right now. Strange UFO spotted over uh, Southern or South End. Listen, it's uh, it's a place in the UK, right? <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, I think on the south uh, Southern End of Essex. Um, it's like all one one fucking word. What do you want me to do? Like I would read this like South End, you know. Bugs understands. He just snorted to it. Yeah, Southern. I would say I don't know. Fuck, I just say South End, that's it. Uh, unidentified UFO over South End. He left a man who spotted it feeling very strange. This is the theme. This is the theme when it comes to UFOs. Now, here's the weird thing. You guys know if you've been listening the last couple months to this Monday episode called about UFOs, you know the UFO stories have been, like, really thin. Like, I've had to bring in some stupid-ass stories because I couldn't find stuff about UFOs. All of a sudden, we're getting close to the election here in the United States. And, you know, people in the UK, I guess, are excited about it too because we're seeing all kind of fucking UFOs. What is going on? And normally around the holidays, you don't see this kind of shit. Stuff like this, you know, UFOs take a break. But everyone's chiming in on the election around here. Even freaking E.T. is here. They're showing up in droves. They're all over the place. They're coming in to put their vote because uh, they're not they're not into that whole absentee ballot shit. They're going to show up here and do some probing themselves in person with the whole COVID-19 mask and everything. Anyway, the man, elderly, again, down in uh, the South, South End, <laughs> his resident, uh, he said he saw the sighting from uh, Kiel on October 13th. Um, it wasn't prolonged, so it was quick because, you know, shit, when you're old, you can't have prolonged stuff happen. That should have killed you over. But apparent, the movement was the phenomena. And he says he couldn't confirm whether it was a several lights or an object with a bunch of lights or several lighted objects. He couldn't tell at all. And again, when you get up in years... That's what happens. Now, the the funny thing is, on this particular um, article, if you go in there, there is a picture of what he saw. He actually took a picture of it. Now, strangely enough, it doesn't even say it in the fucking article that he took the damn picture. But it's in the article. The other thing is, the article is super short. Like, did he kill over? Like, after he told the story, like, right there on the spot? Like, nobody had no fucking questions for him. But what the hell happened? That he had to go back into his room with his nurse? I don't understand. Like, literally, everything that I'm about to tell you is the entire fucking article. Uh, again, I don't, you know, if a guy's telling you, you know, he saw a UFO, this could be the highlight of his life right before he kills over. By the way, he lives out in Kiel. So there you go. It's not an accident. He added this. Here's a quote from... Uh, this individual. They don't even put his fucking name in here. This is the, I'm telling you, it's a shitty ass article. But it had a good picture. Uh, we were watching seals on Keel Beach. When suddenly I noticed the line of lights low down but very intense. It's like a you know, club music. Poof, 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 poof. I don't know. I had to add a little bit of that. Um, I'm not particularly a believer in extraterrestrial UFOs. But watching those lights... Made me feel very strange. I don't know. I just, did he get a chubby? I don't understand. What does very strange mean? Did he want to run? Did he feel younger? Was he more confused about life? Did he have flashbacks? What the hell does that mean? This is when you write a longer fucking article. This is when you tell us more about what the witness <laughs> felt. We don't know what it was. He could have had an erection. I don't know. I don't understand. He could have gotten the shits. He could have squirted all over the beach and scared off all the seals. We don't understand because no one asked any fucking questions. This is the article that we're dealing with about UFOs. Thanks. Thanks, Beach Keel, south of uh, Essex. For the love of Pete, you're not helping us here. Uh, but anyway, the theme is, again, what would you do... If you saw a UFO, a UFO that you could not identify. Now, I did say I was going to go into the, uh, I was going to go into the live chat to see what the Asgardians had to say about this. 
Uh, I don't know that they're going to say anything because they're like all over the place today. They've got all kind of stuff here. Uh, by the way, what's up to Carlo and Dave down under and GameVet? Uh, the gang's all here. Well, almost everyone. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking through the uh, the comments right now. Um, Green Man says LSD. He probably was. I don't know. At old age, you got to take the edge off. So a little LSD might have been it. Who knows? Uh, let's see. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, nope, that's it. Nothing else. That's what I said. Uh, Gavis says excited. He would have been freaking excited. I don't know. It's really hard, really. But, you know, in his case, you know, he's got a lot of sightings, a lot of experiences going on. He probably would be excited. I don't know that I would be. Um, I don't know that I would be excited about it. Because at the end of the day, the only images of aliens that we have are the ones that Hollywood brings us. And most of them are not so nice. They're not so nice. Most of them, most of the time, you have a uh, invading force from another solar system, a planet coming down to kick some ass. And not even taking any names, but taking bodies. It's not pretty. So, yeah, it would be uh, pretty difficult. I would wish someone comes down and takes bugs. It takes the snoring away. Maybe they got a cure for that. I wonder if I could put some tape over his schnauzer. Yeah, okay. Uh, and see if that works. I don't know. At least it's not coming from the other end where it usually does. But um, what can you do about that? Um, yeah, so honestly, myself, I don't think I'd be too excited about it. I'd be more like, fuck, I'm fucked. I'm done for. I need to like hide somewhere and just watch from a distance. Uh, but if you're in the 80s, please borrow somebody's high-tech camera or walk around with one. Take a picture of it. Take a video don't use your iPad. Don't try to save it in your memory banks. Your memory banks are old as fuck. And they probably reset every other two days. I'm just saying. We're all going to be there. So I'm not making fun of you. That's the future for most of us. And we got one more article. And only one more track. And um, we are going to talk about the fact that aliens can see you. Yeah, you. Right now, listening. E.T. sees you. Believe it or not. Every day I'm looking for a way to return To the time when everything was easy to learn Don't know when it started to get so serious Building up an illusion of a world full of trust Moving on When everything's gone 
You know, the last week we had the story about Miley Cyrus, you know, Wrecking Ball. Yeah. I, I, you kind of think about when you go back to the stories. Well, we've heard a lot of stories this year, believe it or not, of uh, famous folks, whether it be music, sports, or whatever, that had UFO encounters of one form or another. And there was one I was going across today, and I came across, I didn't even know this, but uh, with that little pop star young lady, Keisha, she actually reported a UFO sighting back in 2017, and she wrote a whole fucking album about it. See what I mean? Like, some people, they shit their pants when they see a UFO, and others, they become fucking creative as hell. Science is on it again. Science says this. There are a thousand nearby stars that could see us, a new study says. In a way, I'm glad they're doing this. It's not the same old bullshit like the guy that says China dropped a freaking uh, fuselage on your ass. No. They're actually saying that there's about a thousand. And here, the article just gets on my last fucking nerve. Because it says about a thousand, about, about a thousand times. And then it says, oh, actually, it's a thousand and four. Stop fucking around. Why Why did you write this? Why? It's exactly about a thousand and four stars, uh, star systems that are in direct line of sight with the planet. Now, you know, one of the things that I hate the most is when they sit there like, you know, point Dester A and B with the pocket protector. He comes out. And he's staring at a planet millions of light years away. And, um, well, actually, he's staring at the star. And then he notices, and sometimes they use uh, the computer to do this, a shadow move across the front of that star. So they're like, oh, for fuck's sake, that could be a planet. So let me uh, watch this a little longer. And a few months go by, they're watching this fucking uh, pinpoint in the sky, and the shadow goes by again. Well, now they have an orbit. So now they say, oh, it's a planet. Then they hit it with all this uh, chemical analysis, trying to figure out, shit, there's millions of light years away. What the fuck is the atmosphere made of? But, but you you don't even know what the fuck is in the ocean. But you're going to tell me some shit that's freaking million light years away, what's in the atmosphere. All right, well, fuck off. That's just me. But still, they've turn the table on that. And they said, if aliens are smart as fuck as we are, you know, if they're big-brained like we are, then guess what? They can actually do the same thing for us. They should be able to see our little planet, our little pale blue dot, and see that we're crossing the sun. Thank you, Bugs. Uh, so basically, that's what we're saying. They're close enough so that if they were able to use the same kind of technology, uh, you know, God forbid that they're, you know, still barbarians or something like that or cavemen. But if they're able to use the same chemical technology, I'm sorry, technology, they should be able to see our chemical makeup, chemical traces, detect our radio signals. They should be able to fucking find us if they need to. Now, they're not going to go as far as to say maybe somebody did already. So you're going to write a paper and say the aliens could find us if they want to because we have a 1,004 star systems that are in direct line of sight with us. But not one of those motherfuckers is going to come here because that would be ludicrous. There's a quote in here by uh, a Cornell University astronomer that says, If observers were out there searching, they would be able to see signs of a biosphere in the atmosphere of a of our pale blue planet. This was Lisa uh, Kaltenegger at Cornell University. No relation to Schwarzenegger, by the way. Uh, she was the lead author of the paper, and this is what she said. She says, basically, within 326 light years. That's all it is. 326, not 326 million, not 326 billion. 300, like, freaking bugs is in freaking rare, rare form tonight. No, it's just, oh uh, boy. Um, 326 light years only. There are 1,004 vantage points that can spot the Earth. That comes out to about 508 
that have viewing angles that would give them at least 10 hours of seeing the planet. They'd be able to grab 10 hours of data of the planet crossing the sun. So you're telling me that no other fucker out there has thought about this in the entire universe. And that none of these, a thousand plus stars, have intelligent life on it that isn't searching for other intelligent life or hasn't already come here to probe somebody. I don't know. Um, The uh, quote continues to say, only a very small fraction of the exoplanets will just happen to be randomly aligned with our line of sight so we can see them transit. Um, But, again, only... It says, but all of the uh, thousands of stars were identified in the paper in the solar neighborhood could see our Earth transit the sun, calling their attention. So basically, yeah, we have plenty of people. Oh, well, 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 I don't want to go as far as saying people, right? So, you know, fuck my life. Um, there is plenty of opportunity in this thousand or so star systems that one of those could have a planet in a Goldilocks zone, with fuckers smart enough to be looking at the sky too. They might be looking at us right now, looking at you, getting the buff on the shitter. Or if you're walking around, you know, jogging, uh, doing inappropriate shit, someone from another star system, 300 plus light years away, saw your ass. Great, you just represented the whole fucking planet. Don't do that shit anymore. But the whole idea is that it is very possible that someone else has already spotted us. They have their own fucking test, their own uh, telescope in the sky that's tracking and getting their own catalog together of other planets. And they've spotted our little blue fucker planet. Yeah. And that, that could be a leap right to say that maybe they've come here, but you just never know. It is possible. Uh, hell, if the fact that they've caught us is possible, why couldn't it be that they've made the trip or are on the way? This is the episode for today. Don't forget, tomorrow we're talking about space because I'm pissed off as hell about the moon. I know you are too if you've even looked at any kind of news. I just uh, I just don't get it. Why is it so hard? Um, the other thing is, don't forget Saturday. It is the Dark Horde episode live on YouTube We're going to have the uh, triple threat of psychics. You don't even have to fucking believe. Just participate. It is Halloween. And you should wear a costume and come on the show just for fuck's sake. Show us your costume. If you wore one, uh, you don't even have to get a reading, to be honest. I will see if I can get me some kind of outfit to put on. And Of course, he has guardians. Hopefully, they'll come on and wear their uh, secret outfits, their superhero outfits. Uh, But we won't reveal their identity, that's for sure. This is the end of the podcast. I thank you guys for listening. I'm about to check out because i got to get ready for tomorrow's episode because it's all about space. Ciao. Like a milli rocket, skin clear, still look y'all. Andy Miller knock his money in my pocket. Don't call me a money pocket, engine get to rocket. It sound like a thunder rocket, yeah. I still love my baby, even when it's toxic. Crazy like she Britney, but no, she don't shade a knock. Russell Wilson, way I get long, stay in the pocket. I get paid and do my dance like a touchdown, yeah. I can't do no trying to leave that gun around. In my teens, we were acting up and running around. Now we're grown, still get to it if it's necessary. On the ground from January to January Never met nobody who retired when they were young, they were young So I guess young. I gotta get it to the cemetery go, go. Getting paid just for rapping this fun. It's fun I let up around a month in every February Told them slide no electric, electric. Yeah. It's getting hectic 777 Yeah. Told them slide no electric, electric. Yeah. It's getting hectic 777 yeah. 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 Yeah.
Couple of money in my head just to say they did it Can't lie, I'm so paranoid in the window's tinted I own everything around me, you can say it's rented no, no, no. Not talking phone numbers when I'm talking seven digits Earn it by the day, every second minute Used to pay me none, look, now they pay attention Everybody said they drip, but I banded it See them copy all the looks, but I stay switching Pick up the loop, then hit the bank Can't ever change, still wrote the change Captain say the pay, this say the day They made me wait, I'm breaking chains Yeah, yeah Tell me feeling bubbly off the rose. Took a minute, but I got it out the slow way. Friends turn the foes, haters tell them go away. Rappers make a shiggy dance like a soul train. Told me slide, no electric. electric. Yeah. It's getting hectic. Seven, seven, seven. Seven, seven, seven. Yeah. Told me slide, no electric. electric. Yeah. It's getting hectic. Seven, seven, seven. Yeah, yeah. Seven, seven, seven.